Hey guys, it's Sammy, aka the lesbian trapped in a man's body, and today I just want to talk about the new ghost game that's going to be coming out uh, November probably, well we don't know yet, but should find out on the 21st with the Xbox Live reveal. But anyway, I just want to talk about what I'd like to see in the create class system, and just like a couple ideas I've come up with, I've talked with a couple of people as well, sort of throwing ideas back and forth, and I just thought I'd share it with you anyway. So, before we get too deep into discussion, I just want to talk a little bit about the game. It's a pretty good game I had on standoff using the M8A1 with the millimeter scanner and stock, which is pretty much an awesome setup, I recommend you have a go of it. And I uh, can't remember my exact load about I was definitely using Bouncy Betty's and Scavenger, I love that combo. Probably Flat Jacket and I think Dexterity. You have to excuse the host migrations as well. You might see that you might notice the one where I was very lucky to get that kill, I really thought I was going to get it. But anyway, guys, let's get on with it. So basically, I sort of thought about the Pick 10 system. I thought it was a great, uh, great system compared to the old Creator Class system, just because it gave you a lot more flexibility. And it wasn't sort of like in Modern Warfare 3, the great class system was really aimed at rifles and submachine guns. Because if you wanted to use a something like an LMG, you were really kind of um, stuck with what you had to use in order to make it work. With a submachine gun or a uh, rifle, you get away with anything really on Modern Warfare 3. But in Black Ops 2, they sort of moved away from that and gave you a lot more flexibility, which I thought was great. So I'm hoping they're going to expand on it. So the idea I thought is rather than a pick 10 system, we could change it to a pick 100 system. Not as in we have 100 and everything is the same value, but we could change the values of everything. So if we're going to use uh, Black Ops 2 as a reference point, then something like a really good weapon, um, like the MSMC, I would say give that a value of say 11 points. Uh, maybe more or less, I don't know, but you know, it obviously it's going to be tweaked if it's just a rough idea. And then, because the reason I say that is because the MMC, MSMC is a really good weapon and it's good all round. It's quite good at long range, it's really good up close. It's not really got that much of a weakness. But then, if you have something like the Executioner, uh, maybe give that 7 or 8 points because it's really a situational weapon. It's absolutely won't even kill anyone at long range, not even that good at medium range, but it's pretty good at close range. And obviously, it's got the fast switching time, which is not to be scoffed at as well. And then you got something like uh, snipers and shotguns, maybe they'd be worth 10 points because they've got like niche rolls and they're not going to be as good in all situations. Well, maybe the sniper rifles need to be good in every situation, but not in my hands. But anyway, uh, so something for the attachments, like a red dot sight is not really as good as something like fast mags most of the time. Although I do like the red dot sight, if it was worth uh, 7 points then it would it seems to be worth that um, in this system something like a millimeter scanner maybe a bit more uh, target finder is quite useful so maybe that could be 10 points silencers uh, fast magic setting mags are worth more points as well so we could also apply this to the perks as well so something like flat jacket to me seems really useful so it could be worth 10 points and then um, something that isn't quite as useful to everyone like hardwired which isn't used as much just because it's not as useful it's in the same tier as uh, scavenger and toughness but it's very rarely used you can make that something like 8 points so hopefully it be used a lot more alternatively um, someone else mentioned this you could still keep the sort of um, the tier system of like tier 1, tier 2, tier 3 and just increase the points as you go up but then I, I was thinking would it really be um, uh, super overpowered if someone had hard wire, uh, sorry, hard line, ghost, and um, not ghost, sorry, assassin, the one that keeps you off the radar, and flat jacket. I don't really think that would be as any more powerful than any other combination, to be honest. So I don't see why it would have to be worth more. But you know, it's it's up to them. Maybe the maybe it is. Maybe you think it would be overpowered. In my head, I don't think so. But if you if it really was gonna be overpowered, you would just increase it. So for example, if you used ghost, just just say we could you keep it at ten points. But then if you want to use it with flat jacket, flat jacket is rather than ten points is now fifteen points. This would also solve the problem somewhat. Of, for example, to backtrack slightly, talking about hardwired, it's not really worth. Um, as much as it's not really as valuable as the other perks but it definitely is useful in some situations but people have said oh it needs to be balanced so you're like what more can you do to hardwired like I've heard people say making you immune to VSAP but that's not really keeping within the theme of um, the, what hardware is supposed to be about but if we could tweak the points and you could just say well it's 
not quite as good as the other perks but it's less worth slightly less so you don't have to start doing silly things to make every uh, perk uh, you know as useful stuff like c4 to me is really seems to be a lot more powerful than all the other um all the other lethals but it's worth the same amount uh, also bouncy betty's are really useful as well so may, you know you could tweak them up make it a lot more useful make the semtex a little bit less also stuff like throwing axes and throwing knives you know so at this point you might be thinking oh, if you're gonna have odd numbers like you know one point uh, sorry 11 points on msmc you're gonna end up with lots of points left over well, i was thinking why not have why is it that a perk has got to cost say um, 10 points maybe for something like extreme conditioning maybe you could spend one point in and have like an extra two steps two uh, two points have an extra four steps of sprint you know maybe you won't you spend as much as you need something like lightweight you can spend an extra point for an extra one percent of movement so you can spend as little as you want to get you know just a little bit of a benefit or you can go completely spending like I don't know up to 15 points maybe if it's you know within reason to get yourself a lot faster also do this with stuff like flat jacket to give you a little bit extra protection against uh, explosives i was thinking about maybe applying this to life possibly health regen i reckon it could po could work with health regen but life becomes a bit of a problem just because stuff like um you know your consistency of shooting people and juggernaut didn't really work before and it kind of messes with the balance of the guns a lot because you think oh i could just spend one point here and then you you know you're immune to one shot kills from snipe rifles which is kind of unfair on snipers although i would love that in uh, black ops 2 to be honest so also another thing i was thinking about is um the attachments um in this game we have um you know extended mags um and you have fast mags but i thought why stop there why not expand it a little bit more like why not give us why not give us a bit of an option like why not allow us to have say for example let's use the m81 because we've got it here it's got 32 bullets why not allow us to pay a little bit more and have a bullet that has uh, 40 rounds in it and has an increased reload of maybe i don't know 10 percent so it's like 10 percent faster reload and say that cost maybe just as an example here you know not really thought too much about the points amount but say eight points then we could have a different one that is perhaps uh, slightly smaller, like maybe only uh, 24 rounds. But its reload is twice as fast, so it's, some people might think, what the hell, you know, that completely sounds rubbish. But some people like to reload all the time. Other people might think, oh, may maybe if I can have um, a magazine with 50 rounds in it and takes twice as long to reload. Some people would like that. I think maybe I'd prefer that because I don't really reload quite as much and I like to make sure I'm safe. Other people's are like, you know, fire off two bullets, let's reload, reload all the time. I know there's a lot of people like that because I used to do that a lot. But obviously, you know, you want to keep it so that the LMGs are always going to have more ammo. So maybe 50 rounds are a little much. And maybe the reload speeds. But you know, this isn't just um, for magazines, we could do this for barrels as well. And there's sort of like th uh, th a couple of different variables I thought of. There's things that really can mess, yeah, you can mess around with on the uh, barrels. Like, for example, um, the range of it have different barrels with different ranges like maybe some that have an extra 10% range so they do um, you know a little bit more damage for longer and uh, maybe um, some that reduce range so you could have some that chop off 50% range but those could perhaps have a silencer effect so like um, you know just like a normal silencer make less noise as well and also rather than just how it is in um, every Call of Duty is that if you have a silencer on no matter what you always stay off the radar why not have varying degrees of how effective it is so we could have like the ultimate silencer which cuts off a lot of range maybe gives you a, quite a bit of recoil as well not too much to you know make it terrible um, but have it so that um, you know you completely off the radar then we could have one like a step down that isn't quite as harsh in terms of um, range loss and um, uh, recoil increase but if someone was in is within say 10 meters of you they can see you and they actually they can actually see you come up on the radar and then you could have one which is you know practically not even a silencer but anyone within 20 meters can see you so you could have like a varying uh, degree to sort of mess with you know give people the option to sort of play how they want because sometimes people are like oh i would like to have a silencer but i don't really want to get that close so they could sort of get away with not spending all the points in being completely silent because they don't really need it so it kind of lets you suit your loadout a little bit more to your playstyle. 
Um, also, other little points you can spend points in, um, perhaps a ghillie suit, because the ghillie suit actually does make a lot of difference if you're hiding in the dirt. Like, for example, you know the bold guy who you see in Black Ops 2? If you look at every character model, that guy is so easy to spot. If you ever try and hide on a map and you got the bold guy, all you're going to see is this shiny pink head. There's no chance. And also, maybe you could spend like just a single point, you could put a mask on or, so, or maybe some face paint, because little things like that are going to help you out, you know, staying hidden and stuff. So just little things to allow us to spend points on. This is only a minor thing, but whenever we have Modern Warfare games, we always have the furry knife and tray out, we always have the combat axe, or tomahawk wave, if you want to call it. It would be cool if we could have both, and you could maybe, um, you know, balance them out a bit, like perhaps have the combat axe, maybe fly through the air slower, um, but have it so that it has a lot less of a trajectory, as in it doesn't fall to the ground sooner. Then you could have the throwing knife maybe th being thrown faster, but it falls to the ground a lot sooner. Obviously, they'd have the same damages, and it wouldn't be a big, massive difference, but I'm sure people would appreciate just the, you know, the small little differences. And I think that's really what I'd like to see, is just little subtle differences between, um, between everything. It's nice to be able to tweak things just to your exact specifications and that's sort of been the way we've been heading with the pick 10 system because I, I to be honest with you the modern warfare 3 i really didn't feel like i could um i didn't have the degree of flexibility to basically have the load that i wanted it worked well for submachine guns like as i said earlier but for lmgs it really just didn't feel i just really didn't feel like i was really had a choice on that because i needed all these perks to make it work and the AA-12 as well, another one, like you had to use Scavenger because you had no choice. And there was a lot of perks you could have done without, like, um, you know, um, Assassin, stuff like that. Just, just so you could have more third tier perks, because you needed everything to make an AA-12 work. But anyway guys, um, obviously there's a lot more that could be said about this, and hope, hopefully they, you know, hopefully maybe they come up with something even better than I thought of. That would be the best, uh, best option, but I, I think there's some good ideas in there. And uh, I've also got a video which I made before talking about ideas for like classic weapons in Black Ops 2. I'm going to put that at the end if you're interested in watching it. And um, also in terms of the um, diamond camos, I'm, I am going to do the RPG and the S more. Um, other than that I've done pretty much everything. And just yesterday I've actually got every weapon to max uh, level. Um, only had two to do. So anyway guys, I'll speak to you later. Bye bye now. Bye bye.